Hello everybody, I'm Alfred and the video we're about to watch and listen to is titled Billionaire Russian Super Yachts Caught by Police. Now this posted on Supercar Blondie's channel. Let's check it out. Russian super yachts worth $5.5 billion are on the run from international police all over the world. Sanctions were imposed on Russia over its war on Ukraine by the US, UK, and EU. And super yachts owned by billionaires in President Putin's inner circle are among the big assets being targeted. We're coming for you, ill begotten gains. <laughs> that, that is funny. Ill begotten gains. How is it? How is their money ill begotten? What of America's money? What about Biden that has you know his um son hunter doing all kind of nefarious deals with ukraine and with china you know why does why is he um saying that billionaires in russia you know they are they are against are ill got you know what kind of talk is that you know these are people that own companies and have invested just like everybody else you know when it comes to um if there are nefarious things in any of their activities if they were on an international scale it should have been highlighted and addressed a long time ago it is not because of this um, current um, russia ukraine situation and that being said what about america that has invaded every nation imaginable any nation that doesn't bow to america that you know of course now america is run by the united nations you know and the world economic forum those group of people these unelected officials and like you know um trudeau you know is one of them he actually works with um, the world economic forum and you can see even the current guy in ukraine he he's a puppet you know and clearly for the um for america and specifically the deep states in america when you look at the issues with during that trump um, era and the so-called corruption in ukraine that was being investigated and all of that when you look at a lot of those dealings you will see that it is actually america that installed that um zelensky as the leader of ukraine he is not an independent party and you have to understand that a lot of elections a lot are about money like for example you know a um a senior official in nigeria just you know he openly said and he was arrested after saying it you know he said that um in america you know they decided that and they and they said that buhari you know he um you can look it up on google and see the interview he said that um he believed that buhari was able to stop um Boko Haram and to unite nigeria so they put their money behind Buhari. Understand something like in a place like Nigeria, election is about money. For example, for you to run in the election, like the current coming election in, in Nigeria, for you to register to run for president, you need a hundred million naira. Now, a lot of these politicians, these are politicians, you know, where are they going to get the hundred million naira from? That means that, and that is just, we are not talking about for the campaign and for other expenses, just for them to register. A hundred million naira. So they have excluded it, they have made it a situation where only, it's a game that only the super wealthy can play. Then also there is the um, avenue of giving out money left, right and center. Because um, Nigeria is a place where you win depending on how much money you, you distribute. That is just the reality. You know it is unfortunate and of course there is um the bribery and all of that you know and those who we use talks and those who distribute you know money and make sure that every avenue is covered from bribing the those who are doing the counting of the votes to bribing the people that are going to be doing the voting to bribing the talks and the hooligans who will stop people from voting for their opponents you know to bribing the newspapers and the tv stations and of course the tv stations are owned by people who already have their own interests like um Tinubu, who owns majority of the local tv stations in nigeria is running for election so think about that you know so um in a lot of countries a, a, a person who ha might be an outside force but have a lot of money has a lot of say in swing the election 
And you know, um, when you look at the educational system and um, those who really understand deep in international politics on a large scale, they can play the game, you know, in little countries in a way that has never been played before. But these aren't just beautiful floating giants. Many of them are armed with military level security. Some have managed a narrow escape, but others haven't been as lucky. This is the story of the five most expensive. Now, this is wrong, you know. Now you're hunting down Russian billionaires, you know. Just people, this is discrimination, you know. You're just hunting down people because they are, they, are, they are Russian, you know. What crime have they committed? You know, are they Putin, you know, did they have any hand in the Russia Ukraine situation and understand that the person to blame, the two people to blame for this Russia Ukraine situation are Biden and the president of Ukraine. Because let's understand something America, you know, is using Ukraine to store weapons and bio and there are bio labs there are US bio labs there it is that it is also a US bio lab that covid came out from in Wuhan China so why is the US why does the US have labs and why is the US storing you know a lot of dangerous materials in different countries in different parts of the world you know and when it comes to um, Ukraine and Russia Ukraine is just right beside Russia. Let's say um, Russia wants to shoot a missile. Because of the position of Ukraine, Ukraine can basically shoot down any missile that Russia wants to shoot. And Ukraine can also shoot and be an avenue for invading and destroying Russia. And that is why when you look at what is really happening, what is really happening is that NATO just wants a regime change in Russia because they cannot control Putin. They do not control Putin like they control the presence of different nations of the world. Look at the response to COVID, which just tells you the, 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 the reach of the UN. Whatever the UN said, different presidents and leaders, uncontested, in spite of the fact that it did not make sense, in spite of the fact that it made no scientific sense. You know, a lot of people have taken VAX1, VAX2, VAX3, and they still have the COVID. Yet people, you know, were still instructed to push, you know, for the vax and people nations and presidents were pushing like if they do not have any brain you know so it shows you the rich but the issue with a place like Ch china you know china has a dictator as its leader however it is not um a puppet for the un but a lot of countries are russia is also not a puppet you know so they want Putin changed so they will put their own man and of course this is what they are doing they are building a new world order where the nations will be truly ruled by whoever is the head of all this their UN um, world economic forum type body and that is what the Antichrist is going to be the head of as the Bible tells us because the heads of different nations are going to bow to the Antichrist that is how it is going to work and you know when People do things like this, you know, there, there are people that don't open their eyes and see what is really happening. They want to say, ah, it's conspiracy theory. No, this is reality. You know, now you can see like they, they are talking about um, Russian oligarchs because it is, you have to understand that, you know, it, it has been said that 99% um, of the world's wealth is controlled by 1% of the people of, 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 you know, of the population, which is, you know, the rich. And out of that um, 1%, there's an even smaller 1%, you know, there's an even smaller percentage, rather, you know, and in that, there is that war and struggle between ultra billionaires, you know, that, and we can see that the UN, the um, World Economic Forum, people who are saying you owe nothing and be happy, they want to create the cartel. And people like Elon Musk, they want to ostracize him from it, you know, because he's not loyal to them. But we can see people like, Bill Gates, um, people like um, Charles Squad, you know, and all that. You can see their unity in their goals and in their planning and their vision for the world and how far they go in controlling the direction the world goes. You know, so um, it is sad that people are so blind, you know, but this um, nonsense is unfair. Expensive Russian super yachts and where they are now. Welcome to Explained. Number five, Sailing Yacht A. 
The $578 million super yacht owned by Andrei Melichenko was captured by the Italian police at the port of Trieste on March 12th. Sailing yacht A was photographed cruising. What right do they have to do it? You know, is it is, is it something that belongs to the Russian government? Is it something that belongs to Putin? Off the coast of Venice on March 5th, but is now in Italy's custody. And to this is just, you know, like I said, that small cartel going against every other person that is not in their club. The Russians that are part of the World Economic Forum, I can assure you that their own yachts are not disturbed. The Russians that are part of the, you know, um, UN, you know, all these, their, their, their cartel, their cults, you know, they are not being disturbed. That is for sure, you know. To prevent any kind of escape plan, the authorities placed it in a special dry dock and emptied it. Super yacht sails under the flag of Bermuda. And quick side note, if a ship sails under a red and signed flag from Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, or any British overseas territory, it comes under British maritime law and protection. And many Russian super yachts have tried using it to escape police custody. Sailing yacht A is 143 meters long and is the world's largest sailing yacht. She has three carbon masts with the main mast measuring 100 meters above the waterline. That's taller than the Big Ben in London. The super yacht is powered by a hybrid diesel electric propulsion system and has a top speed of 21 knots. She has eight decks with a large pool in the center and an underwater observation pod. And get this, it's rumored that the owner's suite and several other secret rooms are only... And, and another thing is that when these things are taken, when these properties are seized, because, you know, where is the money going to go to? And of course, this is something that a lot of um, silly people who do not think far, you know, like all the people who love when they say tax the rich, oh, they, they like to say the rich does not pay taxes. Look at Elon Musk. He just paid more taxes than any American has done in the history of America. And what happened right after that? This um, Russia Ukraine situation. So, where did all the money go that Elon Musk um, paid in taxes? Even before the war, they had already spent it in all kinds of nonsense, in sending it to all other countries and through all these silly things, you know that are happening, that are putting money in certain people's pockets. Those who make money from the military industrial complex, those who own the companies that make the weapons, you know, when Biden is sending billions upon billions, this is somebody that, promi that promised to cancel um, student loan. You know, and the Democrats were like, yeah, that Biden will cancel student loan. He will, he will, he will, he will cancel student, you know, um, student loan debt and all that nonsense. He didn't do any of that nonsense. You know, he, he didn't do any of it, you know. And I know as a uh, somebody who um, um, is pro-Republican, you know, you say that a Republican should um, be against um, students' um, loan debt cancellation, you know. But the reality of the matter is that when you see them getting into debt, doing things like this, they have spent, you know, Many times over, you know, they have spent more than is required to, you know, take off student loan debt on this kind of thing. So, you know, even though both of them are debt, is if you are going to go into debt, it's not better to go into debt for something more reasonable. You know, if you are going to go into debt, it's not better to go into debt to put a roof over your head if you are homeless than for you to go into debt, you know, buying um, gold and jewelry and still be homeless and then you're wearing gold and jewelry and walking on the streets, you know. You have to understand the priorities. Now, both of them are dead, so, you know, either way it is unfortunate, but, you know, priorities, you know. Um, the government will keep on spending and they will keep on printing. So there's a push, there's an intentional push. Don't think that these people don't know what they are doing. You know, at the top of it, you know, not the Democrats and the people that are uh, the politicians that you see, but the people up top that we don't see, they understand economics and they deliberately want to drive down America's economy. And that is why, you know, President Trump, you know, they, they did everything they could to destroy President Trump to fight him because they saw how great the economy was doing, you know, but you have to understand that um, the poverty of a nation, you know, is profitable for another nation and for other investment interests you know so um when something bad is happening it can be monetized on the other side so it is like a double-sided coin 
and right now part of the plan of those people is to destroy america and one of the reasons why they want to do this is that they want every state to not be strong enough to stand they want it to they want it to fall you know first of all fundamentally and um, this is the reason for the attack on the principles of america why they use black lives matter and you know african americans who have no iq they use them to fight against America and say America is racist and all, and all of that because the fundamental values of America make authoritarianism impossible. For example, you know, having guns, individuals having guns, as many and whatever kind of guns possible. When the individuals, when the people have those kinds of guns, you cannot install, you know, be an authoritarian leader and tell and enforce crazy laws that go against the people. When people have do that kind of ammunition, you know, if there were guns, for example, in Africa during the slavery era, how would that have worked? Imagine trying to make somebody a slave that has AK-47 AK and all kinds of guns, you know, and the white man uh, landing on African shores. And if, uh, you know, Africans had guns, you know, um, let's um, keep aside um, the internal slave trade itself of africans you know making african slaves and sending them let's put that aside let's talk about you know capturing people and taking them that will how would that work you know it is the white men as they land they will all be flattened out they will that is where their grave will be you know that will be a grave site for them you know in this in the same way when you look at even the um the um Native Americans, you know, who were there before the um, founding fathers of America came and, and found America on that land that was basically something else before. You know, if those guys had guns and, you know, the intelligence, you know, the ammunition, how would that have worked, you know? So you, you have to understand th those kinds of things, you know, the concepts of freedom, you know, that are in inherently American. All of this is being destroyed and broken down. And that now makes authoritarianism possible. So that is one thing that uh, wokeness is doing. And of course, we're destroying different states and making them we can It now creates a situation where we have to be dependent on something. Like, for example, when you look at what happened in Afghanistan with Joe Biden leaving weapons behind. You know, after um, Trump did what he did to upgrade the U.S. Army, leaving billions behind, you know, in uh, military equipment for the Taliban and for ISIS and all those folks, you know, leaving that behind was an, was a necessary move to weaken the American army. So the American army would no longer be strong and independent enough to stand. Like what was one of the things that President Trump told, told NATO? That you guys have to bring up your own money. You guys have to put up your own money. Otherwise, we, America leaves. You know, and he was making it clear. Because America had a military that was strong enough to stand on its own. But with America or different nations not having a military that it can stand on its own, then they will all need NATO. And they will now have to contribute, you know, put their own men in NATO. And then NATO will be the military arm of the UN. So it is actually creating a government that governs every other government. You know, an unelected government, you know, the UN, the World Economic Forum, you know, all these guys that are always having um, um, summits here, G8 and G9 and G10, you know. And it's the same people that are in, in all these organizations, you know. And you can always see the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You can always see their, their, their name attached to it in one corner or the other. You see, this is what these um, people, you know, this is, this, these are occultists, you know. Th th these are a cabal of evil individuals. You know, understand that people de having the desire to rule the world did not end with Napoleon. You know, it is not something that, oh, it, um, it's a different day. Humans don't have those kinds of desires. A lot of people still have those kind of desires and still go after such things. And that is why you, you even see even the existence of billionaires who are still making billions and are still striving to make more billions. And in some cases, you know, do not mind... Um, um, how many people they stop from making money in their in their quest, you know? So understand that um, there will always be people who want to rule the world. So it, it didn't stop with Napoleon or Adolf Hitler and all of that, you know. Accessible via fingerprint. Number four, the crescent. 
The Crescent usually spends most of her time cruising between Spain, Italy, France, and Montenegro. In November 2021, it docked at the Tarragona Marina in Spain. On March 4th, its captain made a request to depart, but she never set sail. The superyacht was seized by Spanish police who suspect that its owner is Russia's Darth Vader, Igor Sechin. The Crescent is worth $600 million and is registered in the Cayman Islands. It's 135 meters long and has a top speed of 18 knots. She features a retractable helicopter hangar and a huge glass-bottomed pool. For now, the Spanish Transport Ministry is holding the yacht until its real ownership is confirmed. When such things are being held, like I've said, you know, where does the money go? What right, first of all, do they have to seize? And this is something you have to realize about freedom. You know, that the government has the right to seize people's properties, to freeze people's account, like we saw in Canada. Then, what is truly yours? Everything really belongs to the government. You know, we need to um, make measures possible to make it to to ensure that the government can do that. Because now, you have to when you create a cartel that um, you become the government and you are the one that is always placing people who are going to be in government there. Then you you basically control everything. Now this is where super yachts turn into undercover mean machines. Starting with number three in our list, the Dilbar. This is the largest motor yacht in the world by gross tonnage and is owned by Alishar Uzmanov. It's valued between $600 and $735 million and flagged in the Cayman Islands. The Dilbar docked in Hamburg for refitting in late October 2021, but on March 2nd, 2022, German authorities arrived and ordered for all work to stop and its crew was dismissed. While this may not be the most dramatic super yacht capture, the vessel itself is straight out of a James Bond film. The Dilbar is 156 meters long. That's one and a half football fields in length or as long as a World War I dreadnought. It has a sauna and spa, two helipads, and a 25 meter long pool. That's long enough to accommodate a whole other yacht. And if that impressed you, then get this. The Dilbar reportedly has an anti-aircraft missile detection system, but its builder Lursen says it's just a rumor. Number two is an absolute beast. Here's the Solaris. The $610 million mega yacht is owned by Putin's long-term ally, Roman Abramovich, and is registered in Bermuda. It was off the coast of Sicily when its calm cruise turned into a dash for survival. Just two days before that, it was docked in Barcelona undergoing repairs, and luckily it left before sanctions were announced. After a quick getaway across the Mediterranean, the yacht sought refuge at Tivat in Montenegro on March 13th. And a week later, it was filmed at a holiday resort in Bodrum, Turkey, where it was greeted by not-so-happy Ukrainian protesters. The Solaris is 140 meters long and has 48 cabins across eight decks. It has a top... You know, all these things um, isolate Russia, and it puts Russia in a position where they have to think about... Basically, a new leader would have to think about, you know what, let me just conquer the world. You know, let, let me just start invading other nations, you know. They already think of us in, in this way and, you know, it is disadvantageous because for us to, you know, have all these forces against us. Because it's kind of like when you keep pushing against um, a mighty force, at a point it has to fight back, you know, if it does not um, fight back right away, you know, it has to. So, since this is something that is ongoing, it, it puts Russia in a situation where they have to begin to think about conquering more and expanding. Because the reality of the matter is that the only way they can now guarantee peace and security is if they conquer enough, like half or close to half of the world. Because that is the situation they are now in. You know, and that that is where, where things are hinting um, towards. Of course, um, um, things can change and, you know, God can work certain miracles and change certain things around it. But, you know, this is not good. And, of course, um, when you have people like um, Biden as the face of the um, deep states and the deep state is doing all the nonsense that they want to do, you know, they don't care about um, Biden and all that. And, of course, they want to destroy America. So America being destroyed works to their advantage because understand that the, the deep states, they are not American. They don't have American values and they know what they are doing. They know why they are pushing homosexuality. Homosexuality is something that precedes the fall of every any civilization. 
There is no civilization that embraced homosexuality that did not fall. When the men are marrying me men, women are marrying women. You know, there's also a, there's now a population problem. When men are encouraged to be effeminate, then you now weaken the whole the whole the whole population. You weaken the whole civilization and put, create a situation where, you know, um, it is not as strong as it, it was towards the storms or the problems that it could face or, you know, attacks that it could face. Now, of course, warfare is psychological and on a mass scale, you know, so it is not um, purely uh, physical like it used to be, you know, going up to people's countries and fighting the wars. For example, in this case of the Russia-Ukraine war, it actually started with America making the first move by putting bio labs and you know putting military bases in Ukraine and letting Putin and Russia know that they have done this. That is the first act of war that was done by America. But people are blaming Putin and are like, oh Putin did this, Putin did that. What do you expect him to do when an enemy country, an enemy, a, a country that is very hostile to his, has planted such a thing right beside him. You know, why are you bringing your U.S. weapons right beside Russia? That is what started it. And when you look at the demands, you know, that were placed, this is what Putin has made very clear. You know, this is what Putin talked about. He made it very clear, and you would see um, Zelensky, you know, the president of um, Ukraine that was planted there by the U.S., saying nonsense things like, oh, that um, negotiations, you know, they are in discussions with um, with Russia, their they are, they are peace talks have started. Then in the same breath that he's saying peace talks have started, he's asking for more weapons and asking to be included, you know, in NATO and all kinds of things that will amplify you know, Putin's stance. And right now it has crossed the threshold where it doesn't make sense for Putin to back off. Because Putin has already conquered most of Ukraine. So it's actually stupid for him to back off. It, it has cost him so much. So he, he now has to get the spoils of the war. And anybody who knows war understands this. When you do your research on different wars, you know, even France, you know, uh, and... Um, the fall of um, the, the, the King Louis, you know. After the war that they fought, that they lost, and it cost them so much money, that was part of the reason why that entire dynasty of kings, you know, that is what started the, the decline. And because, because that's what brought poverty to the people. And then, of course, the kings were living in um, great wealth and then taxing only the poor. And, you know, t that eventually led to the French Revolution, which... You know, created a very dark moment of, of, of history. You know, especially for that um, region of the world. You know, war has its rules. You know, and right now, you know, it has gone beyond that point. So even all the money that is being sent now, anybody that understands war knows that it's a waste of time. Russia has already won. You know, Ukraine is too small. And, you know, all the money that um, Biden is still sending is just foolishness. And it's basically him feeding those who make money off war. Because every time America is at war, they buy weapons from certain people, you know, they have their own channel of, um, of um, the maintaining and the supply and the creation of weapons. So that is a lot of money. There's a, a lot that has to do with that. And also... The war itself affects the stock markets and different um, trading positions in different ways. So there's also playing on that and taking advantage of that. So there's a lot of money being made by the war. But the average uh, American, you know, the, the everyday people, they are feeling the brunt of it. You know, look at um, the issue with um, fuel prices, how fuel prices have risen in different parts of the world, even in Nigeria, you know, that have been affected by you know, this Russia-Ukraine situation, all because of Biden's foolishness. And, you know, Ukraine is there telling people, you know, telling African countries, you know, that they should denounce Russia. Foolishness. And unfortunately, it was, you know, so far only the, the, the silly president of Nigeria that opened his mouth and, and denounced Russia. What concerns him? And understand that Russia is selling oil at a discount to India. 
what the Nigerian president should have done was to say we are neutral and to meet with, look, um, we are in this situation, you know, we have always been buying from Russia, you know, we understand that because of this situation, you know, um, most of the people who buy oil from me are not buying from me, you know, can we get a discount like India? And things in Nigeria will be amazing, you know, the the price of oil will have actually reduce and of course with the dangote refinery as long as you know they are not going to do any um shady business which it looks like they are about to do because you know um even with the refinery prices are increasing which should not be you know but these kinds of changes you know um things done wisely would have made sense you know uh, there, there was i believe it was uganda that refused to allow uh, Zelensky, you know address the the um the ugandan um, parliament he was like what concerns us concern you know with your war you know why do you want to address you know uh parliament you know um what business do we have with it you know so um people need to be smart and know when to be neutral and to stay away from foolishness you know but of course in the case of nigeria you, you have you have a system where a lot of the politicians have long been corrupt and you know they are sponsored by the u.s so they are just puppets of certain deep state authorities in the u.s and you know whatever is said you know that is what they go along with at the detriment of so many people top speed of 18 knots an outdoor beach themed club fancy staterooms 20 high-speed jet skis and a helipad among other cool things but we've only scratched surface level beauty here She's also one of the safest yachts in the world, with state-of-the-art security like a radar-controlled missile detection system, bulletproof windows, and armored protection. Finally, it's the number one super yacht on our list, the Eclipse. This super yacht is worth between 700 million to 1.5 billion dollars, and is also registered in Bermuda. It set sail east from St. Martin towards international waters soon after its owner, Roman Abramovich, was put on the sanctions list. A few days later, it was tracked west of the Canary Islands and then north of Algeria where the real test began. The yacht managed to escape after sailing around the Greek islands and finally docking at a resort in Marmaris, Turkey. So what makes the Eclipse worth a billion dollars? For starters, she's 163 meters long and 22 meters wide, making her the second largest super yacht in the world. She has nine decks with two swimming pools, two helipads on the surface, and a third in a storage hangar below the foredeck, and at anchor stabilizers that keep it comfortable for guests when it's stationary. When it comes to security, this super yacht is built like a battleship. It has a top speed of 25 knots, and for a quick escape, it has three launch boats and a mini submarine capable of diving 50 meters. The Eclipse has motion detectors. That's smart. Detectors, bulletproof glass, and an anti-ballistic missile. And that is also very James Bond. I believe there's a James Bond villain that had something like that. And I've seen something like that also in a in a teen teen cartoon. But you know, it was not a super yacht. It was basically an an underground. Okay, yeah, yeah. There was there was also the case of a boat. You know, a, a ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a ship, and it was um, Rastapopoulos. You know he had that but in his situation what he did he faked his own death you know he came out from the ship you know into a speedboat but the speedboat you know was not an ordinary speedboat the speedboat had inside it you know concealed a submarine so what looked like you know as he proceeded further it looked like if the speedboat was sinking and you know he was he was drowning and you know him and you know the fellow he was with drowned but what happened was that underneath it you know after the whole thing sank you know there was a submarine and that's you know was how rasta populace got away so um this kind of um um idea you know with the super yacht i'm just referencing where that kind of thing has been in you know movies and cartoons as well you know it's interesting to see um folks build and design their um vehicles to actually copy that kind of thing defense system she also has an anti-paparazzi system that blurs photographs being taken many other super yachts owned by russia's richest oligarchs have escaped authorities by anchoring off countries that don't have extradition treaties with the u.s a couple have been spotted in the middle east and montenegro while five others have been seen cruising around the maldives this includes the nirvana owned by vladimir Putanin, the titan owned by alexander abramov 
Ocean Victory, owned by Viktor Rajnikov, and the Clio, owned by Oleg Deripaska. Do you think they'll ever get caught? Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, this also brings the question of, um, you know, um, a country that can be neutral where that these people can go to, you know, and dock. You know, it's very important that nations consider these things. It's just like a nation being a, I would say, um, A tax haven you know when nations set up themselves in such situations they end up being super rich because when you are when you create a situation that is advantageous for the super rich you now create a bubble of protection because all these wealthy people now to protect themselves they now protect your nation too because your nation is now a haven for them and that is actually what Switzerland was built on. When you look at the Swiss bank accounts and, you know, the Swiss banks, you know, that is actually what they were built on, you know, back in the day. It's, you know, a, a much larger nation, you know, should do um, stuff like that. Even Russia, Russia, if Russia plays its cards right, as it has been put in this situation where it has to isolate itself, you know, it can function in such a way that it will end up becoming a super powerful force just like china so they will basically be um perhaps you know hopefully not you know but it's now be china russia and then all the other countries under the un you know that have decided to be puppets of the un but you know that's that now um make sure you check out alfred.vip thank you and god bless you one more thing, let's just pray for um, this whole situation, you know, for the owner of the channel, the the Russians, and, you know, everyone involved. In Jesus' name. Oh Lord, Father, I thank you for this day. We bless your name, for your love, for your kindness, for all you've done in our lives. Father, I pray, Lord, Father, for Supercar Blondie and the team. We pray, Lord, Father, they are blessed. Oh Lord, Father, I bring before you the Russian billionaires and, you know, every Russian that is having to go through this inconvenience and this persecution, you know, Right now, we pray, Lord, Father, that it is well with them. I pray, Lord, Father, that um, those who don't know you shall get to know you. The word of God shall be preached to them in the name of Jesus Christ. And they shall move strongly with the gospel. And do, they shall move strongly with the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, Father, that they will end up doing great things for you and preaching the gospel in the name of Jesus. I also pray that all anything that have been taken from them shall be restored unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me with that prayer. Remember to check out Alfred.vip. God bless you. If you haven't given your life to Christ, I would like you to say this prayer after me. And don't pray in your mind. Don't repeat these words in your mind. Make sure they come out of your mouth. You don't have to shout, but you have to be able to hear yourself. And make sure you mean every word of it with your heart. Now repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, according to Acts 2.21. So now I call upon the name of Jesus, and I ask that you save me. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he came, died, and rose from the dead to set me free from sin and to reconcile me with you. Your word says, that you would freely give the Holy Spirit to all those who ask, according to Luke eleven thirteen. Therefore I ask that you give me your Holy Spirit to live in me, and as I've asked, I've also received 
by faith. I thank you, Father, for your precious gifts. I thank you for I have received eternal life. I thank you because I am now saved. I am now born again. I am now one of your kids. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. You are now a believer in Christ Jesus. Now, I would like you to go to alfred.vip. Click the salvation prayer link in the main menu. At the bottom of the page, you will see some links to some resources that will help you now that you are born again. There are things you need to know about Christianity. There are things that you need to learn. You know, resources that will help you as you begin your work with God. Thank you and God bless you.